What's up everybody? It is Matt from Electric All Wheel. We are finally ready for the plug and play kit that is necessary for the Rad Rover 6 Plus. We have had multiple requests for a kit that works with this bike and up until now we haven't been able to fulfill those requests but we finally have the kit and the wire adapters or the cable adapters that will fit the Rad Rover 6 Plus, and we are super excited about that. We know that the connection is going to be inside the frame, underneath the hardware in the battery mounting place, and we'll probably pop the plate just to make sure that we can get it through. We are going to run these cables from the inside out, and then we are going to attach our balancer, take our handy 10 amp hour battery that you see us use in all of these videos, and we're gonna mount it right here. We'll likely stow the balancer inside the battery bag, and that way it will be an external install. If you haven't already, please give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary, and if you are in the Tampa Bay area, get in the Facebook group, eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that group, make an event, and go for an e-bike ride with your friends. I'm sure everyone will enjoy it. We are getting through so we can have a lot of bikes that have the potential for long distance rides, especially for those group rides. So you guys check that out. And if you're in the area, just join the group and check that out as well. It doesn't do any good to observe. You got to participate, get in there, make an event, throw up some pictures, talk about your bike and make those things happen. All right, without further ado, here we go. At the end of the video where we will provide some range calculations utilizing the mica toll constant 25 watt hours per mile ridden so stay tuned for that all right there are four screws one two three four on this shiny metallic piece that is actually a shroud for the channels and behind which all the wires are running we're going to make an intro right here but we need to get this piece off first so we can make all our connections All right, they're clear. I'm just gonna go ahead and slip this piece out of there. Now we're gonna take this bottom plate out. There's a screw in the back side, and then there's one that's vertical right here. This one is the longer screw. So this is a little bit stuck in there. So you're going to keep that in mind. There we go. So this is your connector plate and it's wired up right here. We're just going to take this one out and then you can actually see this plug in that is connected to the plate. Now we're gonna get into our kit. We are going to make this connection inside the frame. And there are arrows that actually point on the face of these cable connections. that 
the little arrow on the head of this thing on the outside of it and all of them have it so you can use those you line the arrows up and point them at one another so now i'm going to shoot my cable right down through that opening and there it is and then after that we have to get this connected to the other cable that comes with the kit so here it is it seems long but these are meant for universal application so you'll have to deal with your length we will offer the suggestion to get an extra xt60 extension kit just so that you can match the links and get where you need to be so we're going to take our battery plate which came with the bike our plate adapter we're going to push the head of that through the bottom opening and then we're going to reseat this plate we're going to bring that cable right up through here and then we are going to attach our other cable from the kit to that one so this is the plate attachment Perfect. So this will run out and then we need one more line to extend this up a little bit and get the length that we need. So we're going to get our XT60 extension cables. All right. I've got a set of extension cables, just the XT60 versions. We just need one cable, it looks like. Now I'm now going to take the cable that came out first. And I'm going to plug this male adapter into it. I'm just plugging it in underneath. There we go. And then I'm running this extension cable up. And here we are. We have two cable ends now that will work for the balancer. Now we're going to take our 40 amp balancer. we're going to take our two ends we are just going to plug them in where it works we know that they're perfectly fit so we're just going to plug that in battery plate out and we'll plug it into one of the battery receiving connectors and then this is going to be our second battery connection hookup but we have the balancer plugged in if the factory battery was installed we could test that way but what i'm going to do is just plug in this one on the slide just to test and see that it works so i have the battery in my lap and i'm just going to plug it in and then i'm just going to set it on the ground wires are hanging out all over the place what i'm really after is to see that the bike turns on and then i can get power to the wheel Right here, it's plugged into the balancer. We're just gonna leave it back there. I'm gonna give this some power. We know that there's no factory battery. Power is on, then pass one. Voila, that's perfect. That's running off of the 10 amp hour battery on the ground. We know we still have the hookup for factory connections. So in goes the factory battery. So there we go. We still have to reinstall all of our internal hardware, but this will be a good test. We know it's alive. We're going to give the bike some power. All right, that's factory battery. Perfect. We're going to go ahead and button this up. Remember the long screw, the oblong one was up front here. So that'll be first. And then this rounded head screw that goes on the back side of that plate.
Now we have our internal cover piece. Put it in an angle first and then wrap over the top of these. So I'm going to loosely put in all four screws and then come back and tighten them down. Perfect. Now I'm going to choose my orientation for this battery and then make sure that it's pointed towards the back of this loop and then I'll hang these other two across the top crossbar. Now one thing I like doing is using this back strap to hold these cables, so keep that in mind. I'm going to feed this through here so I can button it up on the other side. The zipper side is over here on this side of the bike. So first things first, I'm going to bring this up and then strap the cables with it. There it is. These do come with full zippers. I just had, I broke it off the other day and I have not replaced it. I'm probably just going to put a zip tie on it so I can get my hands on it. But I broke the zipper. Don't think that it doesn't come with one. And I will just zip tie the rest just to make sure that it's secure. You might think about wrapping this XT60 connection in the bottom as well. Well, there you have it. We have now added a second battery to the Rad Rover 6 Plus, an additional 10 amp hours. One thing I want you guys to keep in mind is you are not restricted to the amp hour totals for the extra battery. What you want to do is just match the voltage. The system is 48, so we chose a 48 volt battery. You can get any amp hour you want. Just make sure you match your voltage and your BMS can handle the current limit for the bike. We have a 40 amp balancer on here, so we know that the current li limit is just over 20, right between 20 and 30 amps. So the 40 amp balancer will work. We have the plug and play cables, and then we have the 10 amp hour extra battery. These bikes do come with a lot of accessories, so you can place your battery back here. You'll just run your cables the other way and probably use the extra extension cable to get there. And then after that, you're good to go. One thing that everybody wants to know every time we do this is how much more range is this going to get us? So let's do the factory calculations first and then we'll do the addition of the 10 amp hours. So it's 14 amp hour battery from RAD times 48 equals 672 divided by 25 watt hours per mile, which is the mica toll constant, and that's at 20 miles an hour and you get 26 miles 26.88 miles at 20 miles an hour throttle only just from the factory setup so now we're going to do 14 plus 10 
and that is 24 times 48 equals 1,152 watt hours. Divide that by 25 and you get 46.08 miles, 20 miles per hour throttle only on your Rad Rover 6 Plus. And if you add more amp hours, it's only going to be that much more. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary. Check out all of our other dual battery videos for multiple brands and connection types on the channel. We really appreciate your support. If you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up. If you're in the Tampa Bay area, check out the Facebook group, eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. Check out electricallwheel.com and give us some comments on what you think about the dual battery setup for this Rad Rover 6 Plus 24 amp hour bike. We're pretty excited to take this for a ride. We'll talk to you next time. We want to give a special thanks to George with bottlewood.net for hooking us up with these Adirondack chairs. The red goes perfect. Thanks, George.